Hey everyone, I'm Rachel from the Firebase team. In this video, I'm going to cover how to get started with anonymous authentication and account linking in your Android app. All of the code you see in this video is part of a note-taking app built with Jetpack Compose. So if you're interested in checking out the code and following along, here's the link to the GitHub repo. And it's in the video description too. So we have a lot of useful topics to cover today. First, I'll give you a quick overview of Firebase authentication and its anonymous authentication method. I'll also demo the sample app built for this video. Next, I'll show you how to enable anonymous authentication in the Firebase console. Then I'll quickly touch on a couple important concepts like asynchronous functions before jumping into the code to show you how to create anonymous accounts in an Android app. But we're not going to quite stop with anonymous auth. I'll also show you how to round out a user's auth experience by converting their anonymous account to a named account with email password sign-in and then how to display a user's profile in an app. So let's get started. Now, we all know that it's important to keep your user's data safe and secure at all times. You need to ensure that the right people can read, update, and delete data in your app. An authentication system, like Firebase authentication, helps your app to know who a user is, and based on that, to grant them the appropriate access to data. If you want to learn more about the basics of Firebase authentication and get an overview of all the authentication methods Firebase offers, I highly recommend checking out the video Getting Started with Firebase Authentication on Android. In this Getting Started video, we go over some important prereqs for using Firebase Auth, like how to set up a Firebase project and how to add the Firebase Authentication SDK and the Google Services plugin to your app. So let's first talk about why anonymous auth is important and useful in the context of an app's user experience. In all of our own lives, we've all experienced different authentication UX in an app. Some apps, they do it really well, while others, not so good. All too often, you've just downloaded an app, and the first thing you see is a sign-up screen. I don't know about you, but I'm usually immediately turned off by that. I don't even know if I like the app yet, and I'm definitely not ready to give the app my details. And a lot of users might even uninstall the app right away. And that's why Firebase's anonymous authentication option is so useful. It allows you to create a so-called guest account for new users of your app without requiring them to sign up in your app. Then, when they like your app and want to use features that require a named user account, you can ask them to upgrade their user account using account linking in the back end. And all their previous data tied to their anonymous account is now accessible to the newly linked named account. Now, I'll cover all of that account linking later. But for now, let's get familiar with the sample app that's built for this video. This app is called Notes. All notes created by the user are stored in Cloud Firestore and displayed in the main screen, as you can see here. Users can also click on each note that they've created so that they can read, update, or delete it. And once users uh, decide to sign in or create an account, they can do so by navigating to the Account Center screen. And here in the screen, you can see the user's info with some basic profile information that's tied to the user account in Firebase Auth, like their display name. Now, for demo purposes, we've also added account user ID and the account provider. But in a real app, you really wouldn't ever display the user ID and provider in your UI. And down here, because the user is a guest user at this moment, we have options to sign in to an existing account or create a new one. And after the user signs in with their account, this UI will be updated to reflect the new authentication state. And when the user is signed in, the profile now has an email field, and there are two new buttons to sign out or to delete the account. So now that you're familiar with the authentication experience that we're going to build in this actual app, let's go ahead and start implementing everything to make it all work. Now, before any actual authentication code can work, you need to tell Firebase which sign-in methods your app is using. So for starters, anonymous auth. And you can do this in the Firebase console. Go ahead and open the Firebase project you created for the Notes app. Then expand the Build section of the left nav and click Authentication. Now, because I haven't yet enabled any authentication methods for this project, I need to click on the Get Started button. And all the possible sign-in methods are listed here. I'll click the Anonymous button to enable anonymous authentication, and then click Save. Now, while we're here in the console, let's just do a bit more setup for later on in this video when I go through how to convert anonymous accounts to named accounts. 
Named accounts are accounts that have authentication credentials for the user, which come from providing an email and password. And looky here, Firebase Auth has a button to enable that very sign-in method. Let's go ahead and click Email Password. Now for this app, I'm going to require users to use email and a password, so I'll only enable this very top toggle. One very important thing about email password, to use this sign-in method, Firebase strongly recommends that you enable email enumeration protection in your Firebase project. This feature protects against a malicious actor who's attempting to guess or confirm users in your system by passing an email address to the API and checking the response. Now, for all Firebase projects created after September 15th, 2023, this protection is automatically enabled for you. But it's a good idea to double check that it's enabled in your project. Here in the Auth section of the console, go to Settings, then User Actions. Make sure this checkbox here for email enumeration protection is ticked. And if you want to learn more about email enumeration, click the Learn More link in the console tooltip to get to the docs. So now that Firebase knows which sign-in methods your app will use, you can start creating anonymous auth user accounts in your app. So let's jump into that source code. So when you look through the source code for this app, you might recognize that its architecture is model view, view model, or MVVM. And it's the architecture that the Android team recommends for Android apps. If you want to learn more about MVVM, check out Android's architecture documentation. In addition to MVVM, there's another important thing to keep in mind. Most Firebase APIs are asynchronous, which means that the response won't be immediate. It could arrive at any point in the future. So for example, when you create a new auth user account in Firebase, there are a series of steps that are run in the back end, and the response will only arrive when all these steps are finished. Meanwhile, it's important that the main thread doesn't get blocked waiting for the response so that the app can continue performing other calls and updating the UI. In the Notes app, when you open the Notes app view model, you will see a function called launch catching. This function can be accessed by all other view models in the project. And launch catching uses the launch block, which is Kotlin's way of calling asynchronous functions, and it handles any exceptions that might be thrown during the execution of these functions. All the view models that perform calls to the authentication service will do so from within this launch catching block. If any errors occur, the application won't crash, and the error will just be reported in the logs. So let's get cracking on creating an anonymous account. To do this, you need to implement a new method in the account service. So go ahead and open the account service implementation class and implement the create anonymous account function. Creating an anonymous account with Firebase is actually pretty simple. All you have to do is call Firebase auth sign in anonymously. Now remember, make sure to also call await. This will suspend the function while it's waiting for the response from the Firebase backend. Now, as soon as your app starts, you'll want to call the create anonymous account function in the splash screen. So go ahead and open up the splash view model class where all the business logic for this screen is located and implement the on app start function. Now, this function will be responsible for checking if the user is an authenticated user. And remember, since this app uses anonymous authentication, a returning guest user is still considered an authenticated user. So based on the outcome of the authenticated user check, the function can decide between two options. If the user is authenticated, it will open the main screen where the user can see any existing notes. If the user is not yet authenticated, then the app will create an anonymous account in Firebase Auth and then proceed to display the main screen of the app where the user can start using the app's features. So, now that you know what an anonymous account is and how you can create one, let's talk about account linking. It's the way to convert an anonymous account to a named account, which means an account with authentication credentials for the user. Now, a common use case for account linking is to allow users to change how they sign into your app. For example, a user might sign into your app with email and password first, but later they might decide that they'd rather use sign in with Google or sign in with Apple. The account linking feature in Firebase Auth allows you to connect different authentication credentials and roll them into a single Auth user account for your app. Now, for our use case in this video, we're going to use the account linking to enable users to upgrade from a guest account to be a signed in user of the app without losing any of the data they created while they were a guest user. We'll create an email and password account with Firebase authentication and then link those credentials to the anonymous account that was created in the previous steps of this video. So back in the source code, open the account service implementation class once again. 
There's a method here called link account, which you'll utilize whenever a user clicks the sign up button in the app. Now remember that for later. And this link account method receives two parameters, an email and a password. And inside this method, you need to call email auth provider get credential and pass that email and password as parameters. The result of this call is a credential that you can use to perform the account linking. And to do that linking, you first need to get the current user account of the app by running Firebase Auth current user. Now remember, this is an anonymous account at this moment. Then call link with credential and pass the credential you just got from get credential as a parameter. And once again, make sure to use a wait to wait for the service response. Now, as I mentioned a few moments ago, you need to call the link account function when the user clicks the sign up button in the app, which happens in the sign up screen. Open up the sign up view model class where all the business logic for this screen is located and implement the on sign up click function. This function will be responsible for checking if the email and password from the user are valid. Then if they are valid, calling the account service to perform the actual account linking. Now, there are three common validation steps here. Is valid email? Is valid password? And finally, checking that the user typed the same password in both the password field and the confirm password field. And when you navigate to credentials extension, you'll see how to check the email and password. Check the email against the standard email address pattern and check that the password meets the requirements that are uniquely defined for this app a minimum length of six digits, and a pass pattern that includes one digit, one lowercase letter, and one uppercase letter. And if the email and password both pass the validation checks, you can link the accounts. And this is done back up in sign up view model, where account service link account is called. And finally, open the main screen with the list of notes. Since the link account function is using a wait, you can be sure that this line will be executed only after the account linking succeeds. And with that, you've just implemented anonymous auth and account linking. These two features can help you create a really warm onboarding experience for your users. But Firebase authentication can also help you with making your app more customized for your users, like displaying the user's profile inside the app. And you can do this by fetching some information about the current logged in user. So in your source code, open the account service one more time and navigate to the get user profile function. Here you can see how simple it is to get the user's profile. All you have to do is call Firebase Auth Current User and choose which data you need. So the Notes app has this handy two notes user extension that maps the user information to an object of type user. The data being mapped here is the user's unique user ID, their email, account provider, display name, and whether the user is anonymous or not. In the app, in the account center screen, you can display the user info that you want from the profile, like the user's display name. Now again, just for demo purposes for this video, the Notes app displays the user ID and the provider in the account center screen. But in a real app, again, you probably wouldn't display these values. And you can even allow the user to update some parts of their user profile, like their display name. In the source code for this app, you can learn how to do that by using the update display name function available in the account service. So. Now that you implemented anonymous authentication and account linking, and you've built a nice profile for the user, you can run the app and see these features in action. As you saw previously, the splash screen creates an anonymous account as soon as the app is launched for the first time. So the first screen you see here is the main screen, where you can create a note. Go ahead, create a note and save it. And now you can see it in the notes list. And if this set lap seems pretty cool to you, you can upgrade to a full featured named account. Just navigate to the account center in the app and then click sign up to create an account. And here on the screen, since email password sign in was implemented, the app asks for a valid email and password and a confirmation of the password. And when you click the sign up button, done. Back on the notes page, the note you previously created, even as a guest user, still displays. And if you go back to the account center screen, you can see the updated account details. And if you look closely, the UID of the account didn't change. This is the reason why you can still see the same note you entered while you were signed in anonymously. And since the new sign-in method is email password, you can also see the email you used to create this account. And this app gives the option to set a display name. And here's the UI for updating that info. Go ahead and click on this edit button and input your name and save. 
And now if you use this app on any device, the same sign-in will work and the app will show the same display name. And if you want to sign out of the app or delete your account at any time, you can just click on one of these two buttons, which became available after you created the named user account. And that's how you get started with anonymous auth and account linking for Android using Firebase authentication. Again, I really hope this helps you create a warm onboarding experience for your users. But you might ask, what's next? Well, you can add many other sign-in methods to your Firebase project and app. And next in this series, we'll show you how to add sign-in with Google to the Notes app. And if you're interested in learning about that and other sign-in methods, and how to use other Firebase services in your Android app, subscribe to the Firebase YouTube channel and check out the other videos in the Firebase Fundamental series. Well, that's it for now, but I really hope to see you later. Bye.